Dr. Jill Stein uh, is back at it, right? This is I, I, nobody watches these videos. I don't know why I do videos on Jill Stein. No one gives a shit about her anymore. This is interesting. But this is I interesting. This, yeah. this is interesting. It was me. <laughs> <laughs> So, so she she tweeted this out on September twelfth when everybody was upset that Peter Dow, the infiltrator, snake in the grass, smear merchant for hire, infiltrator from the DNC and the establishment, got hired as Cornell West campaign manager, which was the nail in the coffin for that campaign. She says, "Newsflash: It was me that brought Peter Dow to Cornell West." <laughs> that reminds me in the. That reminds me of the scene with Diane Keaton and Godfather 2. We just watched it last week. It was an abortion, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> it was an abortion. abortion. <laughs> it was a son, and I'm not going to bring him into this world. Why? Because this cycle has to stop. <laughs> 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 Why? Because I learned how essential an experienced campaign campaign manager is for my campaigns without one. So I guess she's going to run another one without one then, right? Because there was no one else left except Peter Dow. He's the most experienced campaign manager I know with a unbelievably losing record. <laughs> so let's hire him. Independent Green Politics, strong opposition to duopoly. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So now... So she goes, though I didn't know of Peter Dow in his days as DNC defender, because that's why everybody was like, how could you hire this guy who was the biggest member? She didn't bother to check. <laughs> she didn't bother Nobody to check. Nobody bothered to check. Apparently, and apparently she wasn't checking during her campaign of 2016 because he was the biggest smear merchant of her. So she just now, because I just did this too, uh, skimmed the Wikipedia of him. Of him. <laughs> before she tweeted. The IDF trained. So... This guy, so Rocky says, you are aware this is the same person who smeared all your supporters when you were the Green Party nominee when he was working for Hillary Clinton. Mind boggling. He literally had a parody account called Peter Douche because he smeared anyone who got to the left of Hillary Clinton. Who are you bringing on board next? Debbie Wasserman Schultz and Nara Tandon? <laughs> Very well said, Rocky. <laughs> was that so, when he was known as the Yoda of blogging? That was when he was known as the Yoda of blogging. So now... She does an interview with Sabby Sabs, dooby dooby doo, and <laughs> and now she completely changes her story. What? So this is here we go. Here, here a story, ready for a story change? Here we go. Obviously, I want to address the elephant in the room. A lot of us did see. So Jill's running for president now, mm. and she's she she won't even. She used to DM me all the time, wanting me to bring her on, and I would, and kept kept DMing me to to help promote things, and I would, and uh, as soon as she became campaign manager for Cornell West, silence, <laughs> silence, right, and still silence, right. So I've been email, I've been t t DMing her, come on the show, what gives? I say. I go, what gives? I'm using the old 40s language. What gives? <laughs> What's the rumpus? And so uh, so Savvy asks a good question here. Watch this. Uh, you were a part of the team that brought Cornell West over to the Green Party. Uh, I think a lot of us got really excited when he was running as a Green because we knew that you guys did have experience running presidential campaigns. And then there's also the ballot access uh, perspective to that as well. And then, uh, as we all know, um, you were also the one that recommended uh, Peter Dow to to work with Cornell West's campaign. Ultimately, though, the decision did come down to Dr. West, like deciding whether or not to hire Peter. But then later on, we did see that Dr. West decided to leave the Green Party. I talked to him about that. I talked to you about that. Both of you came onto the show to discuss it. And then not too long after that, uh, Peter Dow did decide to resign from the Cornell West campaign. Some people... Uh, since the announcement of your presidential uh, campaign, some people are now wondering if your decision to choose Peter Dow to work with Dr. West's campaign was in an effort to sabotage the, pan the campaign. Now, this isn't necessarily what I believe, but these are just some of the things that have, that have come my way before this interview. And I, I want to get your, your take on that, because the way that the events have unfolded 
it does give people, some people, that perspective that, <laughs> well, maybe this was just to sabotage Dr. West. So I want to hear your... Some people, like anybody who's paying attention, <laughs> and, you know, those some people, the rest of the people who aren't paying attention, they don't have an opinion. But anybody who actually took a look at it, they think that. Your take on that. So the facts speak for themselves. <laughs> I, I hope they don't, because they don't look good for you. So this is why you have to spin it. Okay, now spin it. Here we go. Introduced uh, Peter Dow, who's a friend, uh, and has been a friend and collaborator for years. With Well, I just heard you say you didn't know anything about him in 2016 when you were running for president and all that garbage he did as Peter Douche. But now he's been a friend and collaborator. Maybe musically. You know, he plays keyboards. Oh, maybe he's musically. <laughs> <laughs> this is funny. This is funny to watch this happen. Usually, all you get this kind of entertainment from Jenk Uger. Yeah, but this is coming right. I'm from, leaning more towards him every day. Me by the too. Way, me too. Twenty four. I'm willing to pretend he could run for president. I oh I I'm willing to. Pretend. I'm thinking of buying a horse if he. <laughs> <laughs> Many people in the Green Party, um, and I introduced so, him. So wait up, hang on. So listen, I want you to hear what she says. Okay, hang on. So he's been a friend and a collaborator. Ready? Here we go. That's such a what a weird name ter term to use. Yeah. Collaborator sounds sounds very close. That's like it's a, it's like when everybody became an ally. I'm like, are we yeah. in a war? Okay. So he's been a friend for years and and collaborator for years with many people in the Green Party. For many people in the Green Party. Wow. Well, now we know why the Green Party has <laughs> never succeeded. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> um, and I introduced him to Dr. West and his team very early in the campaign because I did not want to be a campaign manager. But I felt like we couldn't leave Dr. West without a team. We had persuaded him to come on board, and now he didn't have a team. So, you know, I sort of was cornered into being a campaign manager for a while. And I introduced them to Peter because he was one of the few uh, people with experience on a national level who was willing to share that experience with independents and greens. So there were uh, so apparently few. So that means there were other people with that kind of experience that were willing to work with the greens. But she decided to choose. Be She's screwing herself with the choice of words here. Right. If I'm to take her, if these are the facts and they're speaking for themselves, they're not, it's not good. I would agree with that, Jimmy. Actually, when I heard her just say right now, I was cornered to bring in uh, to be uh, the campaign manager. I don't know if I need somebody to be cornered to be doing things. That seems like they're easily manipulated and malleable. She also said Cornell West, they kind of cornered him into doing the thing. A lot of she cornering. Goes, yeah, we brought, we, we uh, persuade. She goes, we, per what did she say? We dragged, they pulled him in or want him to be president she just yeah. said it before that yes so he didn't want to do it and then you didn't want to do it like, what's <laughs> happening is this a joke <laughs> <laughs> he didn't want to do it i didn't want to do it nobody wanted peter dell do anything that guy because <laughs> he cares yeah because people who want to protect their relationship to power don't do that because you will be blacklisted forever and your career is over the minute you do that. Is that why she won't talk to you? <laughs> <laughs> so people who want to maintain their relationship with power will be blacklisted forever for helping a third party candidate blacklisted from what exactly <laughs> guest hosting the view <laughs> Epstein Island. I thought he was done with the establishment. What are you talking about? No, they, it's just really a good party, man. You gotta, you don't, you don't want to miss that party. <laughs> what? So I feel like we should all be more hung up on this maintaining a relationship with power. Thing. Yeah. Like which power? I thought power was derived from the people. Thanks to our pre precious democracy that we must save. <laughs> we might lose it. So, Kurt, nobody dare help a third party because they don't want to be blacklisted forever. OK, makes sense. But then there's this one guy who Jill just described as a kind of a trauma based mind control slave <laughs> to the DNC who's been hanging around the Green Party for years, <laughs> not spying or anything. Just being a friend and a collaborator and, then, and a collaborator. <laughs> and then you introduced him to Cornell West.
I know just the guy you got to meet. So there you have it. Jill was just helping her friend Cornell West get the hell out of a race he never wanted to be in in the first place. Isn't that great? That's friends helping friends. Sounds like a pyramid. That's clearly scheme. what it is. He didn't want to do it. Like, I can't do this. Okay, I know. Just the, She's I know really, a ringer. <laughs> He's called. They call him the cooler. She's really bad at this. She's really bad at this. And I know why she didn't want to come on my show mm. because I would have pushed back harder on this. And Sabby's just being polite. And uh, Peter is one of the few people who has been sharing uh, campaign management skills uh, with Greens for a while. So I thought it was really important. Yeah, and now we know You're why the, the Greens went from, I think, ballot access on 44 states down to 18. That's the kind of genius Peter Thomas brought. Yeah, well, you know what I bet he did? He, like, cleaned up their, like, uh, files. Or, it's, you know, like, there's probably a lot of, like, management work yeah. right, that he probably does know about. The part where you win, that's why I think the, the you know, that's what the Peter Dow hire is bumping up against, the actual winning of the thing. Here we go. For the Wests to know about him. But truth to tell, I did not recommend that Peter take any position in particular or that they even hire him. What? Wow. Now she's now she's washed. She's doing one of the uh, who did that? Uh, Caesar. Then he washed his hands when he said Jesus. Go. What was the guy? Pontius Pilate. Pontius Pilate, I think. Oh, he, she's giving him the Pontius Pilate. Then he wa she's, she's she's doing the hand washing. She's so she's washing her she's hands like, of it and blaming it on the Jews. Is yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who do you want to free? Jesus or who was the other guy? Barabbas. Like Barabbas. Yeah. Barabbas. Well, they said Barabbas, and Jill Stein went over and she's washing her. I didn't even recommend him. I just, I, oh, I don't do not. What did I say? Hey, should my mother get stomach cancer if I'm lying? I swear to God, I didn't recommend them. Look, Oprah recommended a lot of actresses hang out with <laughs> Harvey Weinstein. Doesn't make her a human trafficker. <laughs> now she didn't even recommend him. Now she even. Uh, he's she, a I guy. Even, he's I a even, guy. He's just some guy. I was like, hey, maybe you guys want to have coffee. I don't know. I've never Googled him. I can tell you that. <laughs> yeah, never looked up this guy. He's been around forever. I don't know what he does. Him. And so for people to say that, like, there was some kind of conspiracy that brought him in, that's ridiculous because it was me that brought him to the West. And if you think I'm the Democratic Party, well, you know, what? heaven help us. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know. But, uh, I don't understand that last part at all. But I'm not really... You, so you, you don't understand the concept of a guy whose <laughs> job is to sabotage you and pretend to be your pretend friend. Pretend to be your friend. And clearly you didn't know a lot about him since you just looked him up recently. It's, apparently. But then she's been friends with him for years. So yeah. it's... I think it's, I'm starting to see how things work. Over at the Green Party. <laughs> so I says, this is reaching official clown show status. And let me just say that I, Jimmy Dore, was wrong about this tweet. Clearly, the Green Party reached clown show status many, many years ago, yeah. and I just misspoke. Yeah, you were upset. I was upset. <laughs> I was upset, and I misspoke. Uh, first, she brought on Dow to Cornell West's campaign. Then when challenged on hiring him, she said she didn't know much about him. And now she says she's known and worked with Peter Dow for years, and he's also been working with the Green Party for years while they lost at ballot access in over 20 states. And then I said, too bad the interviewer let all these obvious contradictions slide right by. Could have been worthwhile news segment. Well, that's not Savvy Style. Savvy Style is to just to ask the question, and so... We never would have had these clips if her style was so, to ask the questions. If, her, if you what? That's correct. So if Savvy Style was to confront her over this, yeah. Jill Stein would have never went on that show, yeah. and then we would have never had this clip. So that's uh, I, I I I if I could retract this part, I would retract that part. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean I'm, I'm so happy when I see a John Stewart, Hillary, yeah, Condoleezza Rice interview. <laughs> And I feel like I could generate a lot of content off that. <laughs> yes, yes, and I did. Uh, so uh, Peter Dow, so he then he then retweets Sabby's thing, uh, just just her asking the question. Peter Dow flipped out over, you know, because he's got the PTSD there, right? Right. So but he's, he's talking about you, I think, in this. Yeah, right? he was. So watch this. So he says, "This is now." Oh no! Wait a minute. That's you. I went the wrong. Wait, a, what happened? I went the wrong way. Hang on. So then he says, this is really beyond absurd. There isn't a shred of evidence I've ever sabotaged a campaign, except every campaign you've ever been associated with. I mean, are you joking? Like, I, honest to God, with a straight face, these guys say this shit. 
Uh, it's all coming from one frustrated right wing sympathizer. So he's doing that thing again where he smears anybody to Joe the left Logan? to left. <laughs> <laughs> Who's he talking? Anybody to the left of Hillary Clinton is now a right winger and smearing them. Uh, right wing sympathizing podcaster and his followers. This guy worked for the fucking Clinton Foundation. He's calling somebody else a right wing sympathizer. Uh, this is clearly absurd, Kurt. And I agree. Frustrated right wing sympathizing podcaster. That's me. Right. Well, I am frustrated, Kurt, but <laughs> I no, I don't feel sympathy for right wingers like Hillary Clinton <laughs> yeah. and Joe Biden. <laughs> Certainly not enough to refer to them as the left. Yeah, that's. I mean, you would have to go through a, like some kind of bloody civil war as a child to be that warped. To be that warped. That you would call them the left. I guess it is the left you if you were pressed into a Christian militia in Lebanon as a boy. <laughs> I, I guess if, they seem kind of lefty to you. Yeah, I mean, if you were IDF trained. Yeah. yeah I, you know, I like Hillary except for her left wing hippie thing. <laughs> 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 okay. So, uh, we both we with both Williamson and West, I took campaigns from deep depth to financial health and built their teams from disarray to full functionality while making sure they didn't have ballot access. What, is that the thing? Uh, I'm always worried if a campaign like how is their financial health like yeah. that's the goal is the financial that's the goal. health. That's such a Hillary Clinton thing to say, isn't it? Yeah. Look at the money we got. All right, here we go. You can check the FEC reports before and after my tenure. Both campaigns are going strong and reaching higher poll numbers than before I joined them. While I've spent the entire year helping to build a major electoral challenge to the oligarchy, these these naysayers oh my God. have sat on the <laughs> sidelines. Naysayers? Peter, I know you're upset, but you don't have to use the N-word. <laughs> Naysayer? That's going to get you in trouble. Uh, I'm smearing and attacking me. The, from, the, that's classic Hillary Clinton. You do the thing, and then you act like the victim. Classic. You know how you know he's a scumbag liar just right here? You, he never addresses the part about how they were on ballots. And, and never, not, I, I, never addresses because that. Because I'm sure there's a reasonable explanation to that <laughs> oversight. <laughs> and he did so well with the financial health and the full functionality of the team. Was probably a strategy, and I'm just ignorant and don't get it. We're all we don't We're get all, it. We, and this guy has been around for years. For years, he he's gets the only it. guy with the knowledge. Yeah. So I would think he would, you know. I like how he never addresses the main point that that you took them off a of ballot. So let, here we go. Uh, could, uh, these naysayers have sat on the sidelines, marrying and attacking me and the candidates I work for without an iota of basis for their claims, <laughs> other than results, <laughs> other than you know reality. <laughs> It's disgusting. And <laughs> this is like Chris Christie calling you an overeater. Yeah. That's what this That's is. That's exactly the feeling. It's disgusting and perfect. There used to there was a there was an account called Peter Douche that was based on you and it was hilarious. And then he got Twitter to take it down. Anyway, it's disgusting and purposely divisive to leftist solidarity. <laughs> I don't see the need to be amplifying these yeah. agitators. You're acting like a bunch of Bernie bros right now. Be <laughs> a bunch of woman-hating Bernie bros. Bunch of sexist, <laughs> violent Bernie bros. Peter, I apologize. I, I I now realize you are not purposely sabotaging Cornell West campaign. You're just the shittiest campaign manager <laughs> in the world. <laughs> You know what? Don't feel bad because if Cornell West was competent, he would have never hired you in the first place. <laughs> uh, so that I just did the fact before you joined Cornell West campaign, he had a ballot access in 18 states. After you, he has ballot access in zero states. That was your true mission. And everyone sees it now. Tell Hillary and the DNC hello from all of us. Hashtag infiltrator. I'm very proud of my hashtag. Mm. <laughs> this that's really some mental health break you're pretending to take, isn't it? Well, he goes back into the shop for MK Ultra to switch to a new altar. <laughs> 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 All right, that's enough. We spend too much time on this already. That's a fun segment. I can't believe the guy would bother to defend himself so poorly. Like what just the the, the way he has absolutely no acumen about like what it'll sound like, this defense. How do these people think he's a good campaign manager at all? At all, he sounds like the most out of touch. Doesn't know what and people he, think. And he yeah. he threw he threw Cornell West under the money for taking under the bus for taking money from that right wing uh, billionaire guy who who was bankrolling uh, 
Clarence Thomas. Oh, oh, he, he's like, I told him not to do it. He did that on his own. It's like you motherfucker. I mean, I, if you I, motherfucker. You can make a bet with me now if you go. How much you want to bet that Peter Dow also was getting money from that same billionaire? <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I, would, I would take it. How much you want to bet he was all? It's not also. too many billionaires in the world. That's right. So you're supposed to get five servings of uh, fruit and vegetables every day, and the shredded lettuce in a double-double and the fruit filling in a donut are awesome, but they don't count against the five servings of fruit and vegetables. I won't nag you about your diet. I don't always eat healthy either. I eat chicken fingers, but I will share... <laughs> What the Mayo Clinic says, that if you want to help prevent heart disease, lower blood pressure, and cholesterol, eat five servings of fruits and vegetables a day. They say that? That's a lot of eating. So if you don't want to do that, and you probably don't, that's why we take Field of Greens over at this show. Field of Greens. There it is. Field of Greens. There it is there. And what it is, it's like a little scoop. You take a little scoop of powder... And you put it in your drink. But the good thing about Field of Greens, it's not like uh, additives and fake. It's just actual fruits and vegetables that they somehow turned into a powder. And then you put it in your smoothie or water. I put it in water. My, I, I think it tastes like a nice lemonade iced tea. That's what I think. Now, Misha, you, t you take this stuff. And how does it make you feel? I would say it gives me a little... Uh... A little bit of energy. A little bit of energy. Just a little a yeah. natural, natural energy. Unlike others, each fruit and vegetable in Field of Greens was medically selected by doctors to support your vital organs like heart, lungs, kidneys, and immune system. Hey, flu season is here. I got the flu. And I trust Field of Greens to help me stay healthy. Field of Greens works fast. You'll feel, you'll feel better with more energy, just like you said. And you'll notice your skin, hair, and nails will look healthier, too. Well, you certainly do look healthy. I'll tell you that. <laughs> If you don't always eat right and exercise, and gosh knows I don't, join me and take Field of Greens. Let me get you started with 15% off your first order. Go to fieldofgreens.com and use the promo code Jimmy. The promo code Jimmy at fieldofgreens.com, fieldofgreens.com. Going to get you 15% off. Thanks for supporting the show. Hey, come see us doing a live stand-up show. We'll be in Burbank, California, Oxnard, California, Venice, California, Palmdale, California. Then we're going to Omaha, Des Moines, Milwaukee, Lansing, Bend, Oregon, Portland, Oregon, Seattle, and Boston, Massachusetts. Go to jimmydoor.com for a link for all those tickets. Mm -hmm. 